Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Creator Talks. I'm your host, Christopher Calloway. Well, it's Monday, and I have another podcast for you this week. I was going to go to one a week, but, well, I have a bonus one for you. This one's not real long. It's only about 20, 25 minutes. And what I want to do is give you an update on a new Kickstarter. This is by a former guest of ours who's on the show on episode number six, Daniel Calban. He talked about Endgame, and now he's on the show to talk about another Kickstarter he's taking part in called American Dreams. It's going to be part of the Powerverse, which was created and founded by Vince White. It is part of a dual Kickstarter, which also includes Jamal Simpson's book, They Call Him Marvelous. So by backing this campaign, you can get a digital copy, digital copies, one of each book, or print, or print and digital, and there's also some really cool posters, and I urge you to check out the video, the promotional video that Vince White put together for the Kickstarter. It really is great, and I think I'm going to put that on social media, share that out so you can see that video uh, when the promotion for this podcast goes out and just see how awesome it really is. You know, with Daniel back on the show, I can ask him my three questions about rest and relaxation, if he were stuck on a deserted island, what would be the one book he'd have, and his beverage of choice. And I can tell you from the art that I've seen that this project looks really solid. It's some really good art. So Daniel and I will talk a bit about the artist and the bullpen behind the entire Powerverse and the multiple universes that they are creating. So let's get started with my interview with Daniel Calban, the writer and creator of American Dreams, here now on Creator Talks. Daniel, welcome back to Creator Talks. Thanks for having me. It's been a while. I mean, well, it probably hasn't been that much in terms of time, but you were on episode six talking about uh, Endgame, and here you are back with another project. Uh, and let me tell you something before we get started about the project. It's American Dreams, and it's a Kickstarter. It's a dual Kickstarter, and I went on the site to check it out. I went on the Kickstarter, and the first thing that hit me right in the face was that awesome video, promo video on the homepage. That is really cool. Did Vince do that for you guys? Vince did that. He's the one who arranged the Kickstarter and everything, and we're really excited to have it. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of tools out there, and anybody could do this, but he did it, and I like the way he did it with style, because being by day in marketing, uh, I can really appreciate somebody that does something that grabs my attention, and does something a little different. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, now, with this Kickstarter, there, it's a dual Kickstarter. There's two books that are being kickstarted both digital and print or some of the pledges that uh, you can pledge for digital or print or other packages but the two that are up are american dreams and they call him marvelous yours is american dreams and we're going to go back in time to the early 1900s and not only are you a big fan of comic books but you're also a history buff. So you've worked that into the story. So tell me how you decided, I'm going to go with uh, setting this back in the 1900s and basically build uh, a kind of a foundation for the power verse. It's really funny. I was listening to the uh, score to the show Ragtime, which is based on the book by Dr. O. And it's this fantastic story about a family who interacts with various historical figures of the time period. Time period, like, tell me my head went, Ding! Superheroes in that time period. Because I don't think it's ever been done before. I think the earliest superheroes have really been done in a historical context. It's been, if it's not like a medieval or fantasy piece, it's been, um, or a steampunk piece, it's been roughly 1930s, 1940s, around the same time comic books were coming out. And I thought it would be really cool just to have all these, the superhero and have them interact with various people of the time period. Like Harry Houdini, Thomas Edison, Nikola Tesla... Um, Emma Goldman, J.P. Morgan, and some will be on his side, some will not be. Some will be working at cross purposes with him while having a similar goal. Originally, I wrote it as Modern Colossi, after the uh, poem on the Statue of Liberty, because I thought it would be interesting to explore this from the immigrant perspective, especially these days where you know we have all this talk about immigration and whatnot in this country, and still back then there was talk about it. So I thought it'd be interesting to address modern politics through historical and superhero lens. People that aren't familiar with the story, you know, if they like something like Rough Riders, I read that title by Adam Glass. That's an aftershock book. That also is kind of uh, set in the early 1900s. So that's this. That's why this kind of grabbed my attention because I'm like, well, I like that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this. Who's the artist on the book? His name is Dodi Eka. He's an artist out in Indonesia. 
and he's been really great. He's he keeps he, he's been sending me these really awesome pages. Like so far, what you guys have seen on the Kickstarter are just two of the pages he's done, and there's a great page on page three, which is this beautiful splash, which I wish I could show you guys of Lori's side of New York at that time period at dawn, and it's really good. And there's a couple of things about this power verse that's being formed through all these different titles. One of the key value propositions, to use marketing speak, about the projects and about the books is it's marketed as the mainstream independent, meaning that you guys are setting a new level of quality with your books. And his art is fantastic. When I saw that preview art on the Kickstarter page, I was like, oh, yeah, not only is it set in history in the 1900s, but you've got a really solid artist. The book, it really jumps out. It's it's really well done. And uh, another thing about the Powerverse, I want to just explain to people what I mean by the Powerverse. This is an entire universe being put together with different projects, different Kickstarters, all under the same banner. All of these independent creators have come together. And I looked and you have like 23 creators that are in the bullpen that Vince has brought all you guys together, guys and gals. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's really nuts because we have our um, chat window to discuss various ideas, show off projects, and I could go to sleep, and then like I next morning I have to scroll like through fifty messages to catch up. It's like we'll be showing art and ideas and trying to support each other's kickstarters and just sh or showing the breeze or sh telling like cool things we're coming up with. We also like will pop up ideas and some of them might say, "Oh, and I know this artist who might be great for it," and or some of come up with another idea and I was like oh yeah cool let's see this happen yeah I would think you guys would get a lot of synergy just kind of bouncing ideas off of each other like that you know it's almost like uh, writers sitting in a room pitching ideas and coming up with a script or for a movie or a TV show now Vince is kind of the founder of all of this he is the founder of all this and how did he kick this off and get all you guys together oh well in my case it was Andrew my writer on Endgame who got in touch with him and I came along for the ride because we were working on Endgame but I wanted something to do in the meanwhile because as well and I was looking through my old scripts in my documents and on my DeviantArt and I, thought, I came up upon what is now America Dreams was then called Modern Colossus I was like um, guys I have this script I don't know if it's what you guys have in mind but I think it would be a cool Powerverse title especially given what the wave is and how it connects to the various titles and I, could, I posted it in the group, and they're like, oh, yeah, this is great. And is this title going to be a foundation of the universe since it's set back in the 1900s? Do I understand that correctly? Or It's the foundation of a universe within the universe. The universe has all these dimensions that interact with each other. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. It's called the – there's like a, a map. You can see it on the Kickstarter page. There's the Powerverse Dimension map, and it says dime 1 through 10. You'll see 10 different – platforms or 10 different universes how are they all distinctly different all those universes are each of the heroes in their own universe oh yeah each universe is a different title or family of titles or different titles that connect to each other they'll connect through various ways either crossovers or portals or and they all combine with each other in those matters but here's but the beauty of this is like you can cross over if you want to cross over you don't have to cross over if you don't but everything's connected yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That way, you're not forced to try to coordinate all these different titles and the universes. Because that get really that can be a lot of work, and it takes a lot of planning. But you can do it if you want. But since you have the ten distinct universes, you can kind of contain things within the universes. And on the Kickstarter site, people can also see there is a plan mapped out for publishing the book. Like from July through December, everything's laid out. Great to see a master plan there that's all been put together. You guys just aren't winging it. There's a lot of work's gone into this, and uh, it shows. Tell me about the other book that's also in this dual Kickstarter. So it's two books, yours, and there's also one by Jamal Simpson. They call him Marvelous. It's about a cop who gets uh, empowered by a freak accident, and he ends up being kind of like the secret weapon of the new Francisco police. It's kind of like a bit of an homage to like the 70s, 80s exploitation genre while being modern and up to date. And it's fun. It's funny. It's action packed. Now, is that going to be in a separate universe from your universe? It's part of a separate universe. Yes. Part of Dime 1, I believe. Well, I'm on, uh, and I'm on Dime 9. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. 
So uh, you have, I guess, about 23 days, roughly, by the time this podcast comes out, to go for the campaign. And your goal is $4,200 to get the books published. Uh, They'll be both available as PDF, if people want to pledge at that level, for one or for two, or in print, or both. And also, you guys have some really cool posters as incentives as well as rewards for the backers. One is the poster uh, advertising all the various characters in the Power of Earth, which range from uh, Liberty from American Dreams to Marvelous from I Call Marvelous to a couple of our endgame characters to uh, Will Power to uh, Codename Redacted to the United Nationalists and so many, many others. And then there's the American Dreams poster uh, by Ace Continuando and a couple of our other members on the bullpen, whose names I'm blanking on, sorry guys, uh, which who inked it and colored it as well if you want a poster that kind of celebrates the uh, idea of what I'm going for. And it gives you an idea of the time period we're in because you no know, Statue of Liberty in the American Dreams poster is still copperish. It's not turned green yet. And it's a different skyline than we, what we have today. Now you're working on Endgame and you're working on this book. How are you able to balance the two books? What kind of schedule are you working on to work on the one and then work on the other? Well, with American Dreams, it's uh, right now it's kind of um, spaced out, so I don't have to be as much in a rush as yet. I do have an idea of how I'm going to go forward with various things. I already read an issue two. Issue two is written, and I've pretty much planned out how issue three is going to be. Endgame, we're currently uh, revising somewhat. For the future issue, so that's going to take some time for rewriting. But Endgame as a whole, the original as the original script is done. We're just going to go back and do some revision of it before we continue on. Now, if all goes well, and this campaign for American Dreams and they call him Marvelous gets funded, are there plans down the road, if all this goes well, to have distribution of the comics through other outlets besides uh, crowdfunding? I think that is Vince's plan eventually. Um. I don't know the details because I'm just on the writing end. Uh, but I, I know we want to distribute through, um, have a comicsology storefront digitally. Um, when it comes to things like Diamond, that's kind of up in the air. But I know Alterna recently has this, its newsprint run going on. It's going to newsstands, which I think people should do more often, to be quite honest. That news broke fairly recently that they were doing that newsstand distribution. Uh, and what I saw was it's not like right in the backyard of a comic shop. It's like maybe 10 miles away. So they're not trying to siphon off people from going to the comic store. They're trying to reach a different audience that goes to bookstores to pick up their comic books. So it's not in competition with the comic shops. So those other distribution channels are important. I mean, it's nice to have one place, Diamond, to, to get everything. But it, it, sometimes it's hard to get your books, if you're the creators, into Diamond's catalog and be listed. Because it's already a really thick catalog that takes me you know, an hour to go through just looking at the comics that are coming out, not, let alone the other merchandise. I don't even get to that part of the book because if I did, I'd probably be broken. Where would I put all that stuff? Um, I just focus on the books right now. I kind of do miss the day, though, of me being able to go to the bodega across the street from my house and just pick up a comic, though. Yeah, I used to like to go to the bookstores and pick up comics, the, the drugstores and pick up comics. Uh, the comic shops are great, though, because there's... We're all of the same mind in there. We're all big fans of comics. Um, convenience stores and the drug stores, all walks of life were going in there, you know? And uh, But yeah, that's that's where we are now. You have a few other projects that you're working on that you, uh, or at least one that maybe you could share with us if you'd like. The artist announced it on his Twitter uh, the other day. Um, it's called uh, Sword of Power. It's going to be our take on Arthurian legend. It's going to be set, it's going to start off three years into the reign of King Arthur. It's going to be a young King Arthur. It's going to be a young Guinevere. It's going to be Merlin still around. So he's got a few new characters, Thurian classics. Um, I actually wrote yesterday the start of issue two for that, and it's actually a really great scene of just... Because everyone usually combines uh, Morgana or Morgas with Morgan Le Fay, but in the original Arthur myth, they're um, sisters. They both have sisters of Arthur. So I recently wrote a scene where they just get to gloat and be evil and nasty and kind of reveal their big plan to the reader. I brought in some history, again, to this legend, and because England was often subject to Viking raids back in the Dark Ages, I thought, what if the big conflict for Arc 1 will be this looming Viking invasion? There's going to be, you know, sword fights, there's going to be magic, there's going to be some comedy, there's going to be a lot of medieval fun. What got you into history to start with? Well, like all Jewish boys, I have to blame my mother. Um, she got me a book when I was six or so about King Tut's tomb. 
And we, at the time, we were living down the street from the Brooklyn Museum of Art with their fantastic Egyptian collection. So that kind of really got me into archaeology and into that to history. For me now, it's like a 10-minute train ride and another you know, 10 minutes walking. But back then, it was like literally, I lived right down the block from the Brooklyn Museum. So that kind of, well, other side of the street. Yeah, history, I think it's always a good source material for stories because it's a great idea for settings. It's a great idea for stories, great idea for conflict. It's, boy, it's history full of conflict. It's just a uh, an amazing, you know, resource. But on the other hand, you, you can look at comics inspired by stuff from the past. And I'm also working on a kind of a 90s action-y idea as well that I'm working on called Codename Lazarus, which is having art by an Egyptian artist by the name of Hini Kitab, I believe. We're still in the preliminary stage. I've already just I've already read issue one for that. Well, even though it's the '90s, now it is it is history. Yeah. It, doesn't, it doesn't seem well, like it. It's, it's '90s style, <laughs> just than the present. So yeah. Five years. I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding because now it is history. I go the '90s. That wasn't that long ago. Oh wait, it was a while ago. <laughs> Not even long ago. It was only what you know in preschool, elementary school back then. Oh my yeah. god. <laughs> exactly. Time flies. I hear you're going to be heading out today for this uh, Spider-Man event. Yeah, there's a, um, an event being held by Midtown Comics uh, down in, in their downtown location with Dan Sonnet and Adam Kubert, and they're doing signings and prizes at the Midtown Comics downtown location on Gold Street in Fulton, which might not mean anything to people outside of New York, but basically it's a financial district, uh, heart of the old city. We still, we still have cobblestone streets. Part of Manhattan. It's actually it's really funny because the other day, not long ago, I was invited to the uh, screening for the new season of Preacher for their season premiere. And I ended up going to the South Street Seaport, I think, for the first time in, or since I was a baby. <laughs> and there's still comes those streets. I'm like, wait, I don't think I've been here or haven't been here in ages. Because you know, people don't realize how big New York is, that you can be in a place and not return to it for nearly 20 years because you're going to so many other places in the city. I mean, I barely explored Queens and Staten Island so far in my life. It's going to be, uh, they usually have their big events in Midtown Comics at their downtown branch because there's a nice uh, old uh, alleyway people can line up in. Well, I hope all that works out and you have a good time at Midtown. I don't think I've ever been in Midtown Comics. I've been to New York, and I know I've walked past it and I've seen it, but it's one of the largest comic shops in the country. Yeah, I have my poll that's actually at their Times Square location. I pick it up every Wednesday morning before heading to work. This way you kill two birds with one stone. You get, this way I... Go up. I go to Times Square, get off, pick up my comics, and then I walk, you know, d- downtown to my office. Which isn't that far from Times Square. Hey, I have a few questions for you. I ask all my guests, and the last time you were on the show, I wasn't asking these questions yet, so I want to ask them of you. Now, they're fairly easy, most of them. The first one is simple. What do you like to do for rest and relaxation? Video games um, and reading. But um, lately, I've been doing a, a, a favorite video game of. Choice, Final Fantasy XIV, the big MMO they've been doing, which has had their expansion release, so I've been doing that. And when you're reading, are they comics? What are you What are you enjoying? A lot of it's comics, but I've been reading some non lately. I just finished um, this, The Untold History of Marvel just recently. Oh, that's a great book. I read that too. Yeah, I just finished it the other day. It's really fascinating. Also, really help. I won't go into details because I don't want to look bad to Marvel. Um yeah, it's a fascinating look um, at the uh, history of Marvel at the bullpen. It also speaks very lovingly of the late uh, uh, Stanley's late secretary, the woman who passed away. Oh, Flo Steinberg. She is interviewed in the book, and she's really a great, I think, was a great resource to interview for the book. I always had this image of the Marvel bullpen of the 60s, and reading the book, it kind of took the shine off the apple because I saw all of the difficulties and politics and business side of it. Uh, and even during the 70s where Marvel was kind of struggling, although that's one of my favorite periods of Marvel books. Uh, I really enjoyed those because there was so much variety and they were trying to throw everything at the wall to see what would stick. Uh, that's what I, it made it so much fun for me because there were all kinds of titles coming out and some very short-lived, but it was still really cool to see all that stuff coming out. But yeah, that's a, that's a great book. Yeah, it's also really interesting to see what was like kind of like the motivations behind why they published what they did. Um, or what was like inter-office politics behind the scenes, especially when it came to the various owners after um, the Goodmans left. The word Byzantine barely begins to describe that. My other question, this one's a little more difficult. 
If you were stuck on a deserted island and you only had one book to read, and since you just finished the untold history of Marvel Comics, what would that book be? Ooh. You asked me it's like one of the hardest questions. Uh, hmm. Maybe a great adventure book like uh, King Solomon's Minds or The Scarlet Pimpernel. Those were two books I really loved as a kid, so I thought it would be a couple good. That would be a good book to bring. Two good ones, actually, but yeah, I'll I'll let you take two because <laughs> you're going to be there for a while. But when you're off that island, what is your beverage of choice when you're relaxing? What do you like to have? Well, I would say Pepsi, but I'm trying to swear off soda, so uh, right now, lemonade. Perfect for the summertime. Well, Daniel, thanks so much, and I hope the project goes well, so folks should check it out on Kickstarter. It is a dual Kickstarter. I haven't seen many of those, so this is pretty exciting. American Dreams, that's Daniel's book, and they call him Marvelous. That's Jamal's book. They're both part of the Kickstarter. Uh, you got about 23 days or so left at the time of this podcast drops when you hear this, so check it out. Digital print, your choice, what reward you want. Daniel, thanks so much for being on Creator Talks. Thank you for having me. Okay, and there's a quick, pithy interview with Daniel Calban on his Kickstarter, American Dreams. Again, you can check that out on Kickstarter, both it and They Call Him Marvelous by Jamal Simpson, all part of the upcoming Powerverse, founded by Vince White. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Let me know what you think. You can reach out to me on social media at Creator Talks Pod. That's at Creator Talks Pod on both Facebook and Twitter. I spend most of my time hanging out in Twitter. And you can also find me on Instagram under Creator Talks Pod. That's Creator Talks Pod. I occasionally post a couple of comic books there on the weekend, putting in the spotlight a Silver Age comic book usually and a Bronze Age comic book. See if you have those in your collection. And if you do, share your story with me about the book. Where did you buy it? When did you buy it? Did you buy it when it came out on the newsstand? Or was it through a a Comic-Con or through a comic book store or some other way, like through a garage sale maybe? Also, visit my website, creatortalks.com. That's creatortalks.com. There I post about once a week. I'll have an article, either a book that is recommended reading for you, or it'll be an interview, a written interview with a writer and artist. And the latest one I have up there is Codename Babushka, Ghost Station Zero, written by former guest on the show, Anthony Johnston, and art by Sherry Chankama. It is my honor and privilege to bring to you this content and these interviews, and it's all free. All you have to do is just download, and you can subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. I'm also on Podbean, no longer on SoundCloud, although I might have a few podcasts on there left, but everything's going to be hosted now on Podbean. Thank you for listening. For Creator Talks, I'm your host, Christopher Calloway. Until next time.